location and um this oh yeah it was a pascal winery do that and city is ashland and the state is oregon and the country's usa Co country hello there we go usa I'll check out what happened here. It actually did a little location geo uh, coding dealio, and it popped in the location that we found that Pascal Winery and Vineyard. That's kind of cool. I didn't even type in the exact name. So it did that automatically, which is real nice. So it's not a big deal, but you just have to remember that you got to do it afterwards. You don't get that automatically doing it on import, which is really a drag. Hey, very quickly, for those of you who are in the chat room, please say something, say hi in the chat, because I saw two in the chat in the beginning and no one's saying anything now, and I'm suddenly concerned that I'm not actually streaming live, which would be really, really tragic and disappointing. Um, let me know that you actually hear me. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's go back to this now. As we scroll down here, we'll see there is um, Shane saying greetings. Okay, good. Thank you, guys. Um, there is a little bit more metadata here. Hello there. Everybody's here. Oh, good. Thank you, guys. Um, more metadata down here So that for the particular image. So this shows the camera that was shot with. So this was a GH5. I looked at this one. It was a GX85. And this one doesn't have much info on it because the lens that I shot these picture with pictures with doesn't have much info. It's my Xiongyi totally mechanical lens, so no info gets transferred to the file. So the file the file doesn't have the info. But if I look at this picture, this next one, that was shot with the Leica twelve to sixty f two eight f four. Okay, great. So that tells me the lens it was shot with tells me the image resolution fifty one eighty four by thirty eight eighty eight. How big it is, the format of it. That's a JPEG, the ISO, the focal length, the aperture, the shutter speed, and so on. So all that information. This is all EXIF data. This is data you are not meant to change and cannot change from within here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there's going back up here. Let me let me zoom back out of here and scroll up. So the selection of info that you have is title, caption, copyright, file name, which is not changeable. Um, the file date, capture date, not changeable. That's EXIF data. The location, city, state, and country, all changeable. And, and that's kind of it, right? Which really isn't much. There's no contact data. There's no address for your studio. There's, there's no client field. There's a lot of fields that are missing here. So again, if this level of metadata is important to you, you can do it. You just have to do it outside of the app, which sucks. And I'm hoping that this is going to come. Um, right now, I think one of the important things to look at, and I've said this before, but I'll say it again, it bears repeating. The important things to look at is Lightroom CC right now is more competing with Apple's Photos app than it is with Lightroom Classic itself or anything else out there that's a pro level. Lightroom CC will hopefully evolve. They have said it will evolve. The intention is, the expectation is that it will evolve to a point where Lightroom Classic can be gotten rid of, but you can't get rid of it until you add all these things. So, you know, a little patience, and I think we're going to see a lot of these features come in. But for now, it's the basic stuff, which is, to be fair, all that the vast majority of people need. And the vast majority of people who even need it won't do it anyway. They're not going to go in there and add this metadata in. So, yeah, it's there if you want it. If you had imported a picture from your iPhone, let's see here. Um... I think these, these are iPhone pictures. Yeah, this was shot on the iPhone, actually in Lightroom's app on the iPhone. And you can see here it has actual, uh, well, it doesn't show you the difference that it's actual GPS data, but it was GPS data. That was, that's I know that was exactly where that picture was taken. That pulled it from GPS from the iPhone itself when it was taken. Let me see if I can find another example of that. Uh, I don't have too many iPhone pictures. Oh, wait, I did start, here we go, iPhone photos. I did start telling it to auto import. I'm not so sure if that was a good idea or not. Um, oh, good Lord, that's horrible. But there, yep, that's me here in this location. So that was automatically added in. Okay, so that stuff works. All righty, so now we've got all that metadata in there. Um, oh, there's more. Let me scroll down another photo. There was that extra. Oh, it was just the map that was showing up there. That's all there was. I saw something go away, and I thought, wait, what went away? Okay, underneath that, we have sync status. Super important. Synced and backed up. This is the only control that you have over this is up here in the cloud. If you click on that cloud icon, you can pause the syncing and backing up. So if you, well, first of all, if you are, if you do not have uh, internet access when you import, then clearly it's not going to be backing up. But if you do have internet access, but you don't want it to use it, let's say you're tethering, or let's say you're in a hotel and you get really crappy slow access and you don't want to hog what little bandwidth you have, or you're doing a live show like I am here and you import and you don't want it to interrupt your show by uploading all the data and taking all your bandwidth like happened the first time I did this, uh, then you can pause syncing right here. Super nice, easy. Just click on the pause syncing and it's there. That stays paused through a relaunch. So you do have to remember to go in and unpause it. But there, the icon changes if we look closely up in the top right corner here. Let's go up, up, and up. You'll see that does change to show it's got a little paused on it so you don't forget that it is paused. So we can resume syncing there, and it goes back to syncing. And it goes, oh, there was nothing to change. It is all synced and backed up. But back to the original. You've just watched a five-minute sample of a live training video. 
To see the rest of it, head to photoapps.expert slash live where you can purchase and download it or sign up as a member. Members can stream any live training video as often as they like and have access to video tips and other exclusive member bonuses. To learn more about membership, head to photoapps.expert slash member.